history repeats itself. German Leopard 1 vs. Russian T-72 Like 80 years ago, Tiger vs. T-34 The Ukrainian-Russian war can reasonably be called a conflict that will set the vector of development for many years to come. If Ukraine wins, the Western model of development will continue its global hegemony. If Russia wins, Western leadership will be challenged, with all the negative consequences for Western countries. That is why weapons are flowing from the West to Ukraine. Anti-tank and anti-aircraft handheld systems, drones, kamikaze drones, armored personnel carriers. In today's video, we'll take a closer look at the German Leopard 1 tank. On April 13, 2022, Germany decided to provide Ukraine with heavy weapons, including up to 50 of these tanks. What kind of armament is this, and will it be able to have a significant impact on the outcome of combat operations? This tank appeared in Germany in 1965. That is, it is well over 50 years old. But don't be too quick to be disappointed. Tanks are one of those weapons that live a long time. There are good reasons for this. First, it is a massive weapon, and at the same time expensive. To change it is often a very costly affair. Second, as the practice has shown, the tank is easily upgradable and can be significantly upgraded for a relatively small amount of money. This is fully applicable to the Leopard. Over its lifetime, it has gone through eight major modifications, not counting minor ones. So let's look at not the year of creation, but the actual technical characteristics. But first, let's spend a little time on the history of its creation, to better understand why this German tank is exactly what it is. In the 1950s, the leadership of the Bundeswehr realized the need to replace the American M47 and M48 tanks. These machines could no longer compete with the latest Soviet tanks, and the Cold War required effective and fast solutions. As a result, in 1956, the FRG in France decided to begin joint work to design a new tank, which in German documents was named the Standard Panzer, the Standard Tank. The requirements for the machine were formulated by 1957, and the engineers began to work on it. But then something with NATO allies did not work out, and in 1963, France stopped joint work and began to work separately on the AMX-30, while the FRG designers continued their own Project Leopard 1. In Germany, the development of the standard Panzer was conducted by three working groups, A, B, and C. Group A was Porsche, B was Rheinmetall, and C was Borgward. The last group took the non-standard way, having designed a revolutionary at the time design, with an unmanned turret and mechanized ammunition. But they did not have time to realize it in metal. Porsche and Rheinmetall presented a classic layout with an inhabited turret in front and an engine compartment in the rear. After testing prototypes by Porsche and Rheinmetall, the preference was given to Porsche, and in 1963, the production of a pilot batch of Leopard 1 tanks has begun. As we've said before, Porsche created the famous World War II tanks, the Tiger, Tiger II, or the Royal Tiger, as well as the self-propelled artillery unit Ferdinand. So in 80 years, history has gone into a second circle. In 1942, on the fields of Ukraine, the German Tiger fought against the Russian T-34, an IS-1, named after Joseph Stalin. And in 2022, on the same Ukrainian soil, the German Leopard 1 will face off against the Russian T-72 and T-80. Looking at Leopard 1, you immediately feel the influence of World War II tanks on its appearance. There is a kinship between the two cats of prey, Leopard and Panther. When the future opponents of the Leopard 1, the T-72 and T-80, have a more modern look. The main armament of all modifications of the Leopard 1 is the L7A1 or L7A3 semi-automatic rifled 105mm cannon made under a British license. The L7 has a barrel length of 52 caliber slash 5460mm, is equipped with an ejector to remove powder gases after firing, and has a quick coupling of the barrel tube to the breech. The gun is mounted in the turret's frontal section on trunnions in a 7.62mm machine gun mount that enables vertical aiming from negative 9 degrees to plus 20 degrees using an electro-hydraulic drive. The gun has an ammunition capacity of 55 to 60 unitary rounds in various cases. The tank is equipped with sub-caliber, shape charge, and fragmentation shells. A trained crew can provide a rate of fire up to 10 rounds per minute. This is a big advantage, since the T-72 and T-80 have a rate of fire of 6 to 8 rounds per minute. But the Russian tanks do this with the automatic loader, so they have a crew of 3 people, not 4. Consequently, the volume of the turret and its dimensions are smaller, and it's more difficult to hit such a tank. And of course, the caliber 105mm Leopard 1 now looks frankly weak. For example, the Russian T-72 and T-80 are equipped with a smooth bore 125mm gun. It is the Leopard 2 that boasts a caliber of 120mm, but alas, it will not fight in Ukraine. At least not yet. And the second, the main negative point, 
The thickness of Leopard 1's monolithic armor is only 70 millimeters, with a slope of 60 degrees. The side of the hull consists of a 35 millimeter plate, and the turret received only 60 millimeter armor. The poor protection was explained simply. When the tank was designed, the cumulative shells capable of hitting up to 300 millimeters of armor were already actively used, and more powerful ammunition was on its way. Therefore, the designers thought that it would be futile to increase the thickness of the armor, so the tank could only resist shell fragments and small caliber air cannons. Of course, during the next modifications, composite plates were installed on the tank, but the generic defect, weak protection, was not eliminated. But the 125mm cannons of Russian tanks pierced with armor-piercing shells of 230mm thick armor, slanted at an angle of 600, and from a distance of almost 1.5 miles. But the weak armor protection still has a certain advantage, the small weight of the tank. And if you add here an 830 horsepower 10-cylinder MB838 Cam 500 engine, you get a good dynamics and passability. On the highway, the tank can reach 40 miles per hour, can climb a 60% hill, and overcome a 3-meter trench. The tank is capable of crossing water obstacles to a water depth of 2.25 meters, and with a snorkel installed, up to 4.0 meters. In case of especially difficult fords, remote control of the tank is provided. It has a cruising range of almost 400 miles. The engine and transmission ZF4HP250 were assembled into a single MTU, Motorin and Turbine Union, unit. This solution allowed the block to be replaced in the field workshop within 20 minutes. The new German tank came out better than the American M48 and was even in no way inferior to the American M60, but it could not compete with the Soviet T62, especially with the developed 1966 T64 Leopard 1. This is partly because the tank industry of Germany began to develop again after World War II, and the designers had their first tank after a 20-year standstill. As we said before, the tank has been upgraded several times. Already in 1970, the 1A1 version with the gun stabilization system from Cadillac Cage and thermal insulation of the gun shell appeared. In 1974, the tank evolved to a 1A1A1 version with a set of hinged armor from Blohm & Voss, making the Leopard 1 a tank with single-piece armor. At the same time, a thermal imaging site and an SEM-80 digital radio were added to the tank's IMS. Before 1978, the Leopard received a new fire control system with a ballistic calculator and night sight for the Commander Perry R-12. But this required the ammunition to be reduced to 42 rounds. In the mid-1980s, the latest Leopard 1 upgrade program to the 1A5 level was launched. The Krupp Atlas Electronic EMES-18 fire control system was installed, as in the Leopard 2. The vehicle was equipped with a ballistic computer with a barrel bend sensor. The ammunition was equipped with an armor-piercing subcaliber projectile. The tank was withdrawn from production in 2005 and has now been completely replaced in Germany by the Leopard 2. However, it's still in service in 14 countries. Greece has the largest fleet, 526 tanks. Italy, the Netherlands, Poland, Australia, Canada, Brazil, and a few other countries also have these tanks. The Leopard 1 has rarely participated in combat operations. The only combat episode on its account was in 1994. Danish 7 Leopard 1A5 tanks of the UN peacekeeping forces in Bosnia and Herzegovina were put on alert to unblock the Tango 2 checkpoint shelled by the Bosnian Serbs. On the way, the convoy came under heavy fire in the village of Sarai. The attacking force numbered up to 150 men, supported by three desperately outdated T-55 tanks. The Danes fired a total of 72 shells, destroying the enemy tanks. One Leopard was damaged in the process, and now Ukraine in the encounter with the more advanced tanks of the Russians. A batch of 50 Leopard 1s is scheduled to be delivered to Ukraine at the end of May. So far, the tanks are being prepared in Rheinmetall workshops. Most likely, these vehicles will return to Germany from other countries. So, can these 50 German Leopards help Ukraine to stand up in the war with Russia? Undoubtedly, they will have some positive effects, but it is unlikely to be a lot. Firstly, this tank is inferior in its technical characteristics to the newer Russian T-72 and T-80 tanks. Unfortunately, for some reason, the West does not fully understand the geostrategic importance of the Ukrainian-Russian war. But Putin has clearly said that its goal is the destruction of the unipolar world. And instead of giving Ukraine the latest weapons, the West supplies obsolete equipment. Secondly, even though the Leopard 1 tank is obsolete, the Ukrainian military is unfamiliar with it. They still need to learn how to fight with it. Representatives of Rhein Metall assured us it will only take a few days, but learning to drive a tank and knowing how to operate it are two very different things. The latter requires much more time, which Ukraine doesn't have. We hope that Ukrainian tankers are already learning Leopard 1 tanks in Germany now, instead of waiting for them to be delivered to Ukraine. Then they will have to master the equipment in the literal sense of the word in combat, and this means additional losses. And what do you think about Western military assistance to Ukraine? Is it sufficient or not? Write about it in the comments below.
And don't forget to subscribe to our channel. There will be many more interesting videos about military equipment.